Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Garrett Polk with Polk Knives and today I would like to discuss with you a couple of knife sheath options and materials and have a little discussion for what some of the differences are and why I offer what I offer. First off, all of my knives are going to come standard with a Kydex sheath. I find that Kydex is a very, very versatile material to make sheaths from. I can make sheaths very economically and very efficiently, efficiently with Kydex. Whereas some of my leather sheets tend to take up to double or triple the amount of investment in materials and significantly longer amounts of build time. It's not uncommon at all for me to spend over 8 to 10 hours making a fully hand tooled leather sheath, which is very difficult to charge for um, just because of the amount of time that's involved. But they are very, very beautiful. I like and use both. Um, all of my knives come standard with Kydex. Leather is an extra option if you want an additional sheath for carry. Um, first off, let's talk about some of the designs. I can offer either in a fold-over pouch design. I do the pouch design with leather more often than I do with Kydex. And, uh, I do so just because some knives it seems to be a little trimmer. It seems to fit the design and the flow of the knife a little better aesthetically and it's a more efficient use of my leather material um, again depending on the design of the knife and it's very yeah. adequate design. I usually stray away from the pouch design on most uh, Kydex sheaths because with my Kydex sheaths what I'm really looking for is the absolute maximum versatility. That way I can address the needs of as many users as possible with the same basic design. When I go with a fold-over pouch design in Kydex, that's really going to limit um, the carry options available, even using the same standard hardware as compared to a pancake design. So most of my knives are going to come standard with a pancake or Kydex sheath. The pancake design really doesn't add a lot in terms of bulk. You're talking about it adding maybe about a half inch along the spine of the knife as opposed to it being a little trimmer. Um, it's pretty negligible in terms of overall bulk and weight. Some of the differences between Kydex and leather is leather tends to have a little more of a, a warm to the touch feel. Leather tends to be a little more quiet in the woods. It's not going to sound as plasticky when things brush up against it. And personally, I really prefer the way that leather feels when inserting and drawing the knife. In addition to that, it just looks a lot better. It has more of a handmade, handcrafted feel and look to it, which a lot of my customers value in some of my handmade knives. Whereas Kydex tends to be a little more utilitarian in design, and Kydex is a little more impervious to weather conditions, so for some of these outdoors hunting and fishing and camping knives, you don't have to worry about the sheath becoming saturated from prolonged, prolonged exposure to moisture. If you're around duck blind or something and you fall in the water, you're not going to get a saturated sheath. Um, in addition to that, if you're using it for hunting use, eventually the knife's going to wind up with blood and guts and other nasty things on it. And that's really, really difficult to wash out of the inside of a leather sheath, but it's pretty easy to rinse out of a Kydex sheath. So I think Kydex has a ton of advantages, um, but leather is definitely a little prettier. And like I said, I, I have and use both. Um, for me, where I draw the line is if the knife is going on my belt as an everyday carry option or if I'm just wearing it around and using it, I'm always going to go leather. If I'm going out into the field where conditions are going to be questionable or I expect for the knife to be holstered a little bit dirty or something like that, I'm always going to go Kydex. Um, so that's that. And on to some of the options. Again, I can do the pouch design or the pancake design in leather. I kind of use both equally. Um, it really depends on the lines of the knife and whether the customer is wanting tooling or no tooling. If they want any tooling, what design are they looking for? What's going to look the best on my Kydex designs? I have a pretty strong preference for the pancake design because, again, it adds a lot of versatility to carry. And honestly, I find the retention is, it has a better feel to it. Um, it seems a little more consistent in how it applies the pressure to the knife and how it applies the retention to the knife. And 
I prefer the way that it feels coming in and out a little bit better. So unless I hear otherwise, my Kydex sheath design is going to be a pancake. Um, <clears throat> let's talk Kydex first because that's what I tend to do. All of my Kydex sheaths come with a drain hole. I attach that drain hole by drilling through. Um, you can see this right here without the eyelet. And that drill is going to come through right where the tip of the knife here it is. Right where the very tip of the blade comes out at that way. Let's see if I can put something behind it. You can see the blade kind of shimmering in the in the camera. Um, that just gives it a spot for any moisture that's built up in there to come out and help drain. And all of my Kydex comes uh, without hardware. If you want hardware, it's about 10 bucks for a tech lock and you can add that to the list price and I'll include it at cost. Um, let's talk a little bit about the tech locks that I design them to. I use the Blade Tech large tech locks. I find them to be extremely versatile. They can attach to a lot of various sheath designs, holster designs, as well as other gear. Um, they're kind of modular, which gives you a lot of options for carry. And it's made in the USA, which I really strongly value. They have this little lock bar down here, and you can see it from the other direction coming up in between these arms. That prevents you from squeezing and unlocking this in the field, so it creates a little bit of a safety gap there. Um, as for the retention of these locks, it's fantastic. You can hear it has a really nice, solid, positive click. It can accommodate up to a two and a quarter inch belt um, or webbing strap or pack strap on your backpack or something like that. And they come with these two bars that can snap in and out. And that'll allow you to adjust for the width of the belt along these little slots. In addition to that, it'll allow you to shift where the knife rides a little bit um, within that two and a quarter inch gap. And so again, it just gives you a lot of carry options. I set up all of my sheaths to be able to run right or left-handed in any of the following positions. You can mount this tech lock depending on the hole spacing on the spine side of the knife or the blade side, right or left-handed, in a vertical position, anywhere in here like this in an inverted vertical position by lining up the holes like that, in a horizontal position, or at a 45 degree cant. And uh, what that allows you to do is slap it on your belt with the edge facing for, towards you or behind you, right or left carry, vertical, horizontal, inverted, or canted. That'll also allow you to do a horizontal or canted appendix carry. It'll allow you to do a horizontal scalp carry behind your back, or it'll allow you to to mount it to a shoulder strap on one of your backpacks or fanny packs or something like that in an inverted or vertical position if you want. Um, all of that comes with one basic piece of hardware and Chicago screws, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, with regards to retention on my Kydex sheaths, it is pretty good. What you got is the basic pouch. They click in, they click out, just like you would expect. The knives don't fall out. They don't rattle from the edge to the spine. They don't rattle through the thickness of the blade. This is not going to create any unnecessary noise from sloppy fit. When I make my Kydex sheaths, um, another reason all of my factory knives come from the factory with the Kydex is because I actually mold the sheaths before I sharpen the knife. And what that does is that creates a little bit of extra, or that leaves a little bit of extra thickness of the blade right along the cutting edge before I've sharpened it when I mold that Kydex sheath. And so that Kydex sheath actually has a gap of relief right along your cutting edge after I come through and sharpen out some of that steel. And what that does is it helps improve edge retention as you're holstering and drawing your knife in and out of that sheath because it's not actually biting down and touching your secondary bevel where you get all of your edge sharpness from. And uh, I can't really make Kydex sheaths that have that little bit of relief right along the edge after the knife has been sharpened. So 
I make sure I do it before I sharpen. I make the entire knife and sharpening is literally the last thing I do before it leaves the shop. And uh, that includes sheath making and finishing the handle and all of that. And that allows me when I make these sheaths to build in that relief, which I think is a really good thing. Um, some people have complained in the past that they're concerned about leather not having as good of retention as what Kydex does, and I think where a lot of that misconception comes from is there are a ton of knife makers that simply don't spend the time to make custom fit sheaths for everything they do. They make a basic pouch, and if the knife fits in the pouch, they slam it in and send it on and call it good enough. And honestly, I understand that because leather work is extremely time consuming. But that's not how I like to do my leather. I like to make sure everything is custom fit. And what you get is retention that is about as good as Kydex. It feels a little different, but it is fantastic. So if you watch, this sheath here from a small game hunter is actually about two years old now. A year and a half, two years, somewhere around there. It's been my everyday carry knife this entire time. It's been in the woods. It's been rained on. It's been wet. It's been re-dried multiple times. I've not reformed it. It's had a chance to stretch. This is about as loose as my leather is ever going to get. And if you notice, when I drop the knife, it doesn't actually fall in the sheath. Just like you'd expect with Kydex, it clicks in. It clicks out. That's really good retention. And what that means is I can take this knife, hold it upside down, and shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it, and it's never going to come out. Yet again, I can hold it by the, the blade. And you're hearing a little bit of that dangler moving, so I'm going to hold that still. But it's not rattling, it's not popping, it's not creating noise. And I can literally draw this with two fingers. So it's not overly tight, it's just really well fitted. I have the welt cut to be just a few thousandths of an inch wider than the actual blade, and that creates a really nice, tight, snug, custom fit that provides exceptional retention. With regards to belt carry options on this, it's not going to be as versatile as the Kydex is. Um, you're going to have to specify whether you want a right or left-handed sheath up front and it will pretty much only work right or left-handed. I can offer it with only a belt loop to fit a standard one and a half inch belt. Um, that's pretty common. I can offer it um, like this with a dedicated dangler. Um, if you order dangler only, you're going to have a D-ring. That's a fixed D-ring stitched in. There is no belt loop on the body of the sheath. Um, but the dangler loop that goes around your belt is removable and what that allows you to do is that allows you to take this dangler loop and put it on your belt. I suggest that you rotate these line 24 snaps in between your belt and your body. That makes your belt um, have a compression against these straps and prevents them from ever coming undone in the field so you never have to worry about losing your knife if you fall down or it catches on brush or something like that. And when you're ready to remove the knife sheath from your body, you simply twist it around, pop these off, and it comes off. What the dangler does for you, in addition to making it a lot easier to um, add and remove a sheath from your body if you're getting ready to go to the bathroom or lay down in your hammock or something like that, is it actually allows the knife to wiggle a little bit. You can see how that's flopping against that D-ring, as well as in and away from your body. And that little bit of movement, especially on larger blades, makes it a lot more comfortable when you're walking around the woods. And you'll find that that knife kind of tends to follow your leg as you walk. And uh, it kind of gets out of the way when you got to sit down. It'll fold up out of the way of your car seats, out of the way of the stumps that you're sitting on. Um, it makes it move more like your body moves rather than being a thick sheath on a mobile body. In addition to that, it also lowers the height a little bit, which provides a little extra clearance for coattails or shirts that are untucked, and it allows it to get away from your body when you're drawing and removing that knife from the sheath, and it just makes it a little easier to not wind up nicking your clothes 
or getting a really cold breeze in the winter time coming up your shirt tail or something like that from exposed skin. If you want kind of all options open, um, which is what I did on my small game hunter design, I can offer these sheaths with a removable D-ring. You can see there that that actually has a screw hole. I suggest you put Loctite on the threads. These come, uh, or I can put it on there for you if you request. These little crossbars can come in and out pretty easy if you don't Loctite them, and I'm a little concerned that it may fall off in the field if you don't put something on the threads. But it allows you to completely remove the D-ring from the sheath, and uh, that gives you the option if you want to wear it tight and high to your body, you can just put your regular old belt loop through, or if you want to wear it with a D-ring, you can wear it with a D-ring, and again, these are going to come with two line 24 snaps. Um, with regards to finish options on the leather, I can do a plain old basic sheath, nothing fancy, stitch it together. I can also rivet it together with copper rivets. Um, I can do border tooling along the hard edges, or I can do full coverage tooling. This is just an example of one full coverage tooling that I've done for my personal small game hunter. Um, this is in maroon linen micarta, and so I dyed the sheath burgundy to match. And uh, it may be difficult to see in the video, but the ghost line in between the tooling and the sheath, right here, I made black. In addition to the welt, I made black and the stitching I made black, and uh, I can always do a multicolored sheath like that with a different colored ghost line or welt. Um, I'll only do a two-tone sheath with black as the accent color, just because that keeps things a little simpler for me, but anyways, that's a few of the options why I like what I do. Oh, I forgot one thing. On my leather sheaths, all of them, whether I do a simple fold over pouch design like this, like I did for my leather cutting knife, or pancake design, they all come with a grain hole. And not a lot of people put grain holes in leather sheets, and to me, it just makes sense being an outdoorsy knife. So, I'll zoom in a little closer on this. You can see that the grain hole there um, is actually created by having a two-part welt where you have a welt here, and you have a welt there that is epoxied together to the top and bottom layers before I stitch it. And I stitch it by hand with a sat what's called a saddle stitch, which is one piece of thread that goes all the way through both sides in both directions. So every hole is double stitched. And even if one of the threads get caught, this saddle stitch will never unwind in the field. Whereas a lot of your machine stitched sheets, if you pull one, it'll be just like if you get a snag on one of your shirt seams or something, you can just pull the string and the whole thing unfolds. That doesn't happen with the saddle stitch. Um, but anyways, I got a drain hole, so I've got a little cup of water here to show how that works. Say you fall down or you're in really heavy rain and your sheath fills up with water. Even your little leather sheath can just drain right out and that just falls out of the bottom like a water fountain. And what this helps to do is it really helps to prevent from excess moisture gathering in your sheath and really saturating the leather super, super deep. And I seal the insides of these leather. Um, I've knocked down all the hairs with gum track. And then on top of that, I've put the sealant that I put on my ex exterior of the knife on the inside and I wax it with beeswax. So it's pretty water resistant. It's not what I would call waterproof. But, as you can see, I just filled the thing up with, with water, and it still pop in, pop out. My knife is dry, my knife is not covered in water, and uh, just creates for a really good leather sheath. Anyways, that's a few of the options. Uh, my name is Garrett Polk with Polk Knives. If you have any questions about any of my knives or my sheaths, always feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will catch you later.